scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If you are the best among your circle of friends, it's a sign that you are a serious local champion. Nobody is inspiring you. Remember, I told us, I don't know if you was here or one of the meetings. If this is a class and we write a test over 100 and the highest gets 14, was he the highest? But did he pass? And now the person says, I'm receiving speech and prize because I'm the highest. What did you get? 14. And then he takes that same result to write work and, and gets F and says, no, it's not fair. I used to be the highest in my school. That's not the issue. What was the standard? Are you seeing that now? So you can compare yourself with mediocre, and because you are the best among them, you think the gates of prosperity will just open. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. There is a cut-off point in life that you must cross for this money to enter your hand. Right? Now the formula for wealth. Remember the formula. I told you this is the grand formula for wealth. Pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it. They think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel. We established that, that that is an incomplete truth. It's a lie. No pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel. It's not true. Any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering. It is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering. And at the same time, it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor. Let me use the opportunity and balance this. How many ladies have been praying that a man of God does not come close to them because men of God have been associated? The moment you say you are a poor person, they say, you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor, as if it's a cause. And people say, ah, may God that sent you go with you. And the lady who is going with you, I pray for you. You see, all those kinds of pity. What? <laughs> What gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, Daddy, a pilot asked me, I'll say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go outside him and let's change our story. But the moment you say, Pastor, say, ah, Pastor. What did you tell him? I said, yes. I we have, you see that is a mindset. And that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter it was Gary you gave me your house but come and see what God has done you never get rich just because you are a preacher you get rich because of what the formula that I taught you and this is the formula that the amount of money we receive your wealth or your income will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the demand or the need for what you do your ability to do it and the difficulty in replacing you. This is the formula for wealth. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's there. The amount of money you receive, your wealth or your income will what? Always, don't forget, always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do. This is why pastors are rich. Because what they are teaching, there is a need for it. Are you seeing that? Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone. That you have skill 
and proficiency enough to do it well. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. The degree to which it's difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is the exact formula for wealth. It will work for anybody, any day, anywhere. It's a principle. Unfortunately, preachers just tell you, tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come. But because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tithe. Or I dropped the seed in miracle service. And now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it, I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. See, what I'm going to show you tonight if you remain poor after this series, you were not fair to yourself. I'm being very sincere with you. When I show you what you're about to learn tonight, see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing now. People pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing. I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth. I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas. He's a living faith pastor. And he stumbled across the wealthy place, part two, just the part two. And I heard that when he listened to it, he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them. And say, I've been a businessman and I have never had this. This is somebody into oil and gas. He said it changed his mind completely. And now you are here seated and you are just nodding. Many of our parents, if they had one tenth of what I'm telling you, I promise you they would have been billionaires. See, this, this thing is, is, is so magical that no matter how dull, it's not left to your personal intelligence at all. This is, this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing. If it was just a product of the Y, the X, intellect, some people would be disadvantaged. But it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy. Is God speaking to us? So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this. And we did a little personal evaluation. Take note of that. Let's go straight to the teaching of tonight. The wealthy place, part three. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to paradise. I'm on my way, on my way. On my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way to better days. Multiple streams of income, right? Tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income. I pray you value it. I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it. I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering. See, I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not one million, it's not ten million, it's not to say come and take a car or take a house. And that's, that's not my concern. The greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives. For me, this is the greatest consolation. No matter what you buy or sow into my life, is as irrelevant as whatever. It will really grieve my heart 
if after this teaching your finances does not change, I don't know what to tell you again. Praise the Lord. Because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires. Billionaires. All of them. Every single one of them. If you have ever admired them, this is the key. I've reduced the work for you. All the tens and hundreds of books, seminars, videos, and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive. If you don't act on it, there's no reason why you should blame God. Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes. Put your right finger. There's something I'm going to bring out and shake. Many of you say, my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you. You see why we like fetish things? Africa for that matter. They say, turn around and slap something three times. They go, it's done. The man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness, we hate it. Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say, no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it. I say, really? Just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa. Inheritance. He died and left it for me. <laughs> That's why we love that scripture. The wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written. Wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born. Is that true? That scripture was even written before colonialism. And those who quoted it died without touching the wealth. My Bible says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge. And then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma. There is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. But what an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline. Right? We see faith. We see patience. You leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night, I've told you preparation takes time. It's manifestation that is instant. We talk about Joseph becoming the prime minister. We forget that a woman lied that he raped her. Do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny? We forget all that one and we just say in one day, Joseph came up. From the day he helped someone, to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him, yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. 
pastors pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently but very wrongly and we must admit it I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy why because all we do is copy and paste I go for a pastor's conference I hear what a man of God I honor says and you see the fact that you are um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done are you getting the point he is fulfilling the law although he does not know it so he is rich and he thinks the reason why he's rich is just because he's anointed no sir this is the reason so many people are under pressure if I must be rich like my daddy or papa I must be a pastor right so there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry racing to make sure they start churches in the hope that if I have plenty members imagine what it will translate to let me tell you something funny that someone told me I think it was a year or two ago we were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me he said man of God you are the people who enjoy ministry see all the plenty crowd in Koinonia you see you see why he's poor because in his mind he's saying Abba everybody prophets of him, everybody gives you 10 10 thousand or one one thousand you see that on Koinonia database there are about 6,500 people multiply that one times even one one this is how poor people think they just say Kai Apostle tell us the truth you are enjoying see <laughs> if that's what you are thinking how much have you given me <laughs> how much have you given me your personal seed no that's wrong that's not how you think that's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. Sosoki Nossa que buti Nossa que buti Sing it one more time Nossa que buti Nossa que buti Verse 10 Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted. And it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon, that which is that which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river, and then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it there was gold, and the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry, but an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust, recession-proof financial life, multiple streams of income. 
the greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish the first question elderly people ask you is ah uh -uh, you are finished now you say yes say so where are you working not what are you producing not are you deploying your potentials where are you working so it trains you to serve it trains you to work now the trouble is this the average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in nigeria ranges within 50 to 100 thousand is that fair enough that's about the amount right <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money it cannot fund your vision are you getting the point now a job was never designed to completely fund your assignment getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle please listen to me operating under one stream of income I don't care how successful that stream is is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle that's the reason why many people never have enough now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just hundred thousand then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250 maybe 350 some people never even earn that much and then they find out that things do not change right because of parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income the meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300 thousand and be eating at mama food is that true so while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira but you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira so your need your your expenses will rise with your level of income you were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it and then you forgot that you are going to get married you thought your wife was a toy you don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat a body to dress and then you had the gods to get her pregnant here comes your twins see that yet hold on whether you call them children or adults financially they are three human beings are you getting me regardless of their level of consumption they will still take something out from you and then you have a dog oh and then you have goats you see we, you don't know that all the once it is a living entity it must consume you have been counting yourself alone are you getting the point now now the trouble is there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is job security means that you are working in a place where um your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist praise the lord everybody say hallelujah say i got a federal government job which one civil defense and you laugh to mean that 
for the next 20 years I will be there you really think so see that so we find consolation oh I'm working in a bank and all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you sorry we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go what did I do so I said no 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 you didn't do anything we really appreciate you in fact your services are well needed can you leave I remember somebody who got a job, I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel, one of these um, telecommunication companies. He was very happy. At the point he was preparing for his marriage, he prepared based on that budget. Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share, you either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200,000 and off you go. And he smiled and collected the 200,000. Because you see, when you are poor, you think 200,000 is a lot of money. Until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself, you know, <laughs> will finish everything and then you find out that you are... I will never forget, a few days to his wedding, he refused to come to the place where the wedding would take place. I had to call him and say, where are you? He said, I'm so, so pleased. I said, leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust God hmm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song I love Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry every mundane listen the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. He's the cup that will never run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will Can you sing just that part one more time? Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people. Why do we need multiple streams of income? Number one, to ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. Please let me have four people. I want to use them to just um, make an illustration. Three, four people. Let me stand here guys watch this let's call these guys different streams just stand and face me thank you watch this if this is the first and only stream of income you have let's call this a job right who we'll identify what the others are shortly but let's assume this is all you have your job let's even call it a nice place NMPC that's where many of us dream of or Shell or Chevron or whatever it is you want to call it right watch this this is all you have number one it was never designed to fund your project and number two your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning it's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant if you were working in Nitel in the 90s you would be happy because Nitel was invincible. I mean, they were the only telecommunication company. You would imagine that working in Nitel by now, you would have been the boss. Only for you to be fired and sent away. Because the demand, right? For as long as there was a demand for their product and their service, they had money. When there was no demand. Number two, if you were working in night post, post office, right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact 
even we the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy I grew up knowing you not to work and they say I've been waiting uh, even last week I submitted my CV and look at this he started that when you were five years now you are 25 for 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job one stream the beauty of multiple streams is this watch this the the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream are you getting what I'm saying now there is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice I'm sorry to say but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say Kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset so they say it's true times are hard but the truth is they are, they are, they are on heaven they are in heaven heaven on earth you see that so you find out that this person is here god forbid his car is stolen his salary alone was designed to take care of the family but because there is another stream in two or three months he has bought another car for some for somebody who collected he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million you have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car you know you are finished whether you are to go for work or not you must go because if not for anything that loan must be paid out of the 2.5 you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000 you know that you are the journey is still far you cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are so you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning that's why they vent the anger on you they get up and look at you one two three four five six children now the seventh one has come there is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank they now cut our salary from two hundred thousand to one hundred and fifty and the man is saying where is my life going see every man you have seen was not like that every man you have seen who is angry beating his wife I can tell you if that's how he toasted the woman she would have told him no something made them happen notice men from 50 years and above that's why people don't even remember father's day because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked it's not their fault it's the inability to learn what i'm teaching you and if you don't learn it i guarantee you in the name of the lord you are on the way to becoming exactly like that absolutely in fact it will be harder because the 21st century living in the 21st century right now is a lot more difficult and complex right well if you factor in terrorism if you factor in wickedness by people put in all these factors humanly speaking that living in the 21st century 
is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams. If one stream dries up, there is another that can complement. While you're working on that one, then there is another. There is no millionaire I know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people. Except those ones. But there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire. And trust me, I've met a number of them in my life. None of them operates under one street is poor and average people civil servants that operate on one stream of income you calculate everything what the father and the mother is getting for some it's not even up to hundred thousand and yet the school fees of one child is seventy five thousand or fifty thousand or even thirty thousand why would the man not be angry do you know how many angry people are in nigeria have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and it just stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you you have come of age. And uh, we, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. We get to heaven there's going to be a lot of confession very funny statistics multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century activating multiple streams of income hear me brothers and sisters is the key to surviving the vicious tide the vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen you have not seen recession yet more will come it's in your bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself i choose to exempt myself so i rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you So the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another. Now watch this. I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income. Write two words down. One, cash flow. Please, quickly, let's save time. We have to finish um, what we have. One, cash flow. Number two, write capital projects. One, cash flow. Two, capital projects you are not listen you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital projects talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects 
So they bought land, right? They have cattle, they have goats, they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects, but they did not make arrangements for cash flow. So you can see a man that owns 10 houses, but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency. You will think the man is stingy because you, that's how many of our parents, many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money. They may not necessarily be doing that. They are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it. So they do not, they didn't prepare for today. They were focusing so much on tomorrow. They forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow. Are you getting that now? So they forgot that there will be needs. How many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1,000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke. He may say, I don't have money. You think he's joking, but truly, truly, there is nothing. That's a poor financial life. Yet he has land, right? Yes, he has resources. Who owns this container? He's the person. Who owns this Coca-Cola depot? He's the person, but there's no provision for this. Now, the trouble is, in a bit to remedy that, the younger generation, our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow. You see the mistake? So, I need money now. I want to buy the watch of 20,000 now. I want to buy the trouser now. So you see somebody and say, man, this guy is rich. The watch of 20,000, shoe of 15 or 20,000. You are wearing a suit of this. You calculate everything on him and he's standing. He's wearing 200,000 and you are beguiled to think he's very rich. Still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow. Are you getting what I'm saying? So financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today, you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow. There are many of our parents who will start enjoying their money when they are 80 years. At 80 years, the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition. But at that time, they are too old. They can't do anything. They will die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone. And you will quietly just leave. Are you seeing that now? And then we, the younger generation, are so obsessed. I'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results. Watch people that graduate. Everybody wants to show I'm working. I now bought a car, a BMW, and um, I, don't, I no longer use the road. I now fly, I fly, I fly around. I'm flying to this place, I'm flying to that place. And then you carry your phone and say, this is, this is iPhone, iPhone what? iPhone 6. Have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth? And then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich. That's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say, this guy is about to regret it. Unfortunately, most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich. So you come back and say, is that brother that asked me? And they say, which one? The poor one or the rich one? And then you say the rich one, meaning the one that held that phone, the one that... The, the watch or the shoes and all this were glittering, you, are, you will be in big error. Because if you neglect today, you will die today and never meet tomorrow. And if you concentrate just on today, you will enjoy today. If you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow, today you walk naked tomorrow. If you eat the food you should eat tomorrow, today get set for hunger. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. The key to activating multiple streams of income. Write this down. You do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses. Now, I listen to business people a lot and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences. But the problem here, watch this. For many people, the danger, 
huh? is that they just tell you go and start up a business aside from your job do something else that teaching is very sincere but misleading if you have received that teaching i want you to throw it away now and listen to what i'm about to teach you because for many people that's that's the circumference of your business seminar are you getting blessed so they've told you together with the job start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down god's system for activating your streams of income i want to teach you the kingdom system there is a babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of god must balance i believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of god go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of god's word i don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 4 18 verse 16 quickly it's a popular scripture we always talk about but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time what i'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life proverbs 18 verse 16 let's read on it says a man's gift please listen please pay attention a man's gift does what does two things what's number one it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 no. there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts 
and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream look at david for instance almost every gift the bible identifies in david later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that i want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again. Or I am a civil servant. So when you call people, you say those who are civil servants, this side. And you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side. Those who are businessmen, this side. That thing is about to change in the 21st century. That concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur. Are you getting my point? There must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century. Are you getting blessed? Is God helping you? There are many pastors. I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church, eating God's money. Pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things. And the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income. Now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he's the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord 
without giving it expression every gift in you I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the Lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors Dr. Miles Munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of Bahamas Faith Ministry International and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the Bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jets many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means he, he, he not owned one aircraft Boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them see it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father in lost sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak right there are so many things there are books to write i have different thoughts on different areas i can document my persuasions there are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up so don't you see a man of god rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money you see articles blackmailing men of god all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has as though he's not supposed to be blessed people are arguing and complaining about one jet two jets my goodness i don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come if we need 100 jets we will buy all of them i guarantee you very unapologetically see that you can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity it doesn't have to be by crooks 
it doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. Hallelujah. ministry for me alone with all the blessings of ministry is only one stream of income there are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed i will never be poor it's not about being a preacher it's about realizing that once there is a demand for what i do and i train myself in the ability to see to do it when you are sleeping the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty 
are you getting that of the people and using it for my that's why you never come and hear me talk business in church no sir the bible says give to caesar what belongs to caesar right i cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in koinonia to buy it it is my product but a lot of men of god are doing it this is where the balance must come in you cannot use the vast people that god has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them no no there is a difference between different aspects of your life that's the reason why god fragmented himself into different aspects you cannot know rafa by studying jaira jaira is a dimension itself rafa is a dimension itself sikenu is a dimension itself is that true el shaddai is a dimension itself but all of those names belong to one person i am so he said who do men say that i am and they were calling different dimensions of him as a as a man of god you are dimensional while it is true that you do not stay on one place you must know where the boundary lies never carry business into church and go and manipulate people no it's wrong very wrong if you are here as a man of god and you are doing it stop stop you must give people an opportunity to make their decisions they are not daft of course i understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity do you know why i'm telling you this because there are some things i may not be able to share here but see the business world is a lot different from ministry in the business world you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves as a man of god you can ruin your church in one moment right i know there was a situation that happened in in one church down in abuja this is one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of god but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God, define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there. Now, there are other platforms you can create, like Sunday Adelaja, who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this, not in the name of the church, but at their own risk. That way, whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. Is God helping us? Let's continue. So your streams of income should be around your giftings, should be around your abilities, your streams of income.
Now look up. I want to teach you something, please. Very important now. Write this word down. Time. T-I-M-E. Write this word down. Time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you have given part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts, maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books. I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books. I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them, I have the content, but what of the marketing? What of the publicity? Never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best. You will minimize mistakes. You will make instant progress. So I can write a book right now, for instance, and then release it. And I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore. Doesn't know me, has never seen me, may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because i'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas i can write on i can write on the anointing i can write on wealth and prosperity i can write on leadership all the areas that i know god has granted me grace in i'm just showing you how one stream now i can be here and be effective in koinonia Another thing, for instance, if I build an estate, you see that? If I build an estate, there are people renting. I don't even know them. I've never seen them, for instance. But I'm here teaching the word. My time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do. But there are channels that are bringing me in. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very important. If I teach, assuming that we're selling our teachings, imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry but god instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free it's a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message the media department will now package it the wealthy place Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere. Whereas you are still here. As much as possible, value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, 
you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your your skill number two you are exchanging your time these are the two things that go for your salary you cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life because you're 24 hours if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something there i'm looking for money somewhere it's terrible i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just that's the language of those we call hustlers hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money right they have, their time is valueless to them so they can give it away just for anything my time is precious to me because my life is measured in time God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment and while it is true that I want to activate streams of income it will not be at the detriment of my assignment and so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible praise the Lord write this down there is a, an equation for financial freedom financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind that you have money does not mean you are financially free financial freedom is equal to financial abundance the availability of the resources plus time there are people who have money but no time no time to pray no time to build no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families no time at all they tell you no time i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they started doing that when they were 20 now they are 55 i'm busy i'm busy and then they die because on the seventh day god rested you you are in the ninth day you have not rested you will die hallelujah let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century in the school of prosperity especially in the 21st century almost any and everything has a demand there is a demand for almost any and everything this is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village there is a demand for just anything see right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of God just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day 
I have a meeting morning and evening. You will think there are already enough pastors. No. No. There are 7.2 billion people. Right? You think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever. It's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything. And I told you the formula. Once there is a demand, there is money for it. You go and meet somebody and say, borrow me 10 naira. He'll tell you, I cannot. But sell something, he will pay you for it. In the 21st century, brothers and sisters, you are only limited by your creativity. You are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. Can have a contract with most of the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people. And they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand. For your gifts or your potentials the reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it the reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it let me tell you in the world of prosperity you lose by becoming like every other person your uniqueness is what stands you out your competitive advantage 
there is what you get in koinonia that you will never get anywhere it cannot be cloned there is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere there is what i should get from your life that i cannot get anywhere this is your key to prosperity men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you they will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique i hear the chains of him falling I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one? has to be in a business or a corporate platform ready Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 if we can get NIV please give us NIV quickly I hear the chains can we get NIV okay fine Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 please let's save time Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, Give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, It says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Uh, who has that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down land open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. 
there's nothing to hide there's no secret about it there's no secret there in the first place education speaking how many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate they are not just talking they are transferring knowledge imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying hundred thousand for the seminar calculate how many people hundred thousand times all the people we have including all those who are online and i'm doing the same thing i don't need to talk louder i don't need to shout more the exact same thing 10 years after i have preached this or i've said this or i've delivered this lecture i will still be getting paid for it education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only hundred copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right Rick Warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement? You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now. Listen, every week. I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there and you can't make any call you cannot even browse whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf these are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive right the 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 the, the driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. 
they, you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as I need his services I will keep paying for it how many of you are sitting on millions hundreds of thousands roaming around whereas or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved you want to show people now you live in a three bedroom flat that is empty with one small mattress in one of the rooms and people think you are a big boy you are not big you are small whereas something would have been bringing you income let me tell you something the transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied it's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly from the first day the car goes out by evening money is coming 5 a.m in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever i know someone who bought kekenapem right he just bought one i think second year or something like that and then when he bought that kekenapem i think about 12 12 000 comes in every week Twelve thousand. he just went and registered it with the association national union those their unions and then he's around praising the Lord and giving tithe every week. And you are saying, this guy, is he a thief? Oh, no, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Not necessarily. You just have to be poor. And that's why I told you, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four five months, you are broken even, and you can buy another one and then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money they blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived and yet we keep blaming god but tonight god is giving somebody intelligence you don't need to register any company you don't need to know anybody with an average car or an average golf at least three thousand is coming for you every day this is the minimum in seven days is 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand. Demand. The transport sector. There are many people dreaming, I will go into oil and gas. I will go into oil and gas. How much do you know it takes to start oil and gas? You want to be a thief? Can't you start gradually? How many people are sitting on 5 million, 10 million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions? You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? popcorn inside abu is that not true popcorn i'll never forget years ago when one of i think that was in 2006 or 7 i wanted to start one popcorn machine popcorn business in new Bamadi, and i wanted somebody to manage for me so i needed to i sent him to go and do a research for me on everything i was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes five thousand naira every day every day you are eating you bought it 30 naira but many just like you are paying for it and he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it graduation matric it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000 20,000 there is no single ice cream machine in Zaria not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough I'm talking of real a standard look at this there are many of you sitting down what's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity about 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. 
I'm, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they are happy because the, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon, you will find out that the difference between you and graduation is one example. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more and about 60% of those people are ladies count the number of saloons you have in your campus are they up to 10 I doubt if they are up to 10 servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people if you have 1,000 more of those things it will still not be enough and yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been we have been wired to consume that's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are wealthy. Many of us are, are going into food. Question. If we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Portacourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine. Wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much, as much as possible this is a difficult thing I know I'm human, trust me it's a very difficult thing but I want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as God grants you the grace, you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender, say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million. Until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million. And you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you as you are sitting down right now. Not just from anything. Maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debts that you have eaten, everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key, you borrowed money for it. You are smiling, but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it. You will be a slave forever. It is one of the Babylonian system. That's why you notice I never talked about borrowing. I'm sorry, I know that this insults a lot of your business book, but I don't believe it. In business, we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt. You use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say, this is it. I've come to the end of myself. Lord, I'm ready to begin to take decisions. Listen, the key.
to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change it must change listen a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change you will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator in nigeria many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a a, a victim whatever happens i write it no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 verse 12 media can you help us please psalm 66 please everybody rise this is a very serious moment right now it's a defining moment for many of us everyone read one to read It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your wisdom you have brought us into a wealthy place i announce to you koinonia there is a place called the wealthy place there is a place it's a place of plenty it's a land of abundance and it is absolutely left to you i read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read Miles Munro's books, Discovering Your Potential. Just that one book. Please hear me. And I made a vow. I told myself, I know that it will not happen overnight. But no matter how slow, I am willing to pay the price. I told myself, even if I have to leap into the wealthy place, I'm going there. I made up my mind. I said, I'm tired. I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything the, the kind of money that will take me to hell no and for me to live in integrity i knew that i would pay the price i cried to the god of israel i remember it as clear as i'm looking at you tears were running down my eyes 
and I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern, sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours non-stop in tongues. I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen. For as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow. So I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that. But I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. When you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something i'm sure they would just send it to one over it but that was my eyes listen and i returned back to my seat outside i stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while i stayed there the holy ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the holy spirit told me he said, from this day, you have entered well. I will never forget. The next day, 6, 20, 6, 10, on the dot in the morning, somebody calls me shaking and says, are you Joshua Selman? I say, yes. I say, who are you? He said, I don't know you, but the Holy Spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life. Please, I need your account number. I said, what in the world is this? A few days later, the chairman, board of trustee of this ministry, he's a general now, he called me. And I think he transferred, how much was it? 400,000 or something into my account. No, no, no. He first gave me 150,000. He said, the Lord led me to tell you that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera. They were doing a pro. <sighs> Within a span of about one week, having prepared myself, the door started opening mysteriously. In less than four to five months, I made my first meeting. I will never forget how it felt that day. Not borrow, not father's money, not uncle and auntie, not our money. I just stood there. And I said, there is a wealthy place. Time will never change anything. Decisions do. I'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed. If you don't believe in what I'm saying, please stop. We're rounding up. The Lord led me to do this. I'm going to challenge everybody. I want you to sow a seed. It's very important. I can help you. It's not about money. You know that we are people of integrity here. Ah! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
na de na na de na na de na na de na 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 they will touch you where you are it will be like fire they will touch you where you are as they touch you they release your miracles as they touch you they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. Take over. Take over. <laughs> we have come. Skatapa katabara tabash. Skatakum jabara tabariata. Take over. We have touched the end of our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. One more time, just one time. Hey, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction an end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the lord is saying take it out lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as i'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as i speak by the power of the holy spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation i pull it out this is a miracle service I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing
sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly augustina the lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what i'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because i'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the lord is telling me release augustina release augustina release augustina release augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you are five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world 
for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ So the Bible says, he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says, for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets Abraham Samson Isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ and then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son 
you laid aside your majesty you gave up everything for me you suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my when you died and rose again Now today In heaven If you know it, just sing it with me I really want to worship you, my Lord You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the Father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he, ah, 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 ah. he said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? 
It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere f that they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, 
if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but I know that when a man says it is finished, it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health 
and all of this because you are a just God your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the Bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak I will not fight it but remember that I not only paid the price I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from Philippians chapter 2 the Bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom will i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life 
you can believe jesus is a healer he doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish there is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health 
that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception 
what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speaking according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. 
and by warfare they mean a consistent never ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing i'm not acting under the law i'm not trying to do something i am responding there is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my own think god's life and all its content is away the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any curse i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the curse of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god 
in spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then he says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction, waiting for your participation. You got up, your faith, he calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it, so he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looks for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call. And begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 
35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a Christian if you are a child of God this is Good Friday well, even if you are not a child of God read I will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now God He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement and he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son. Who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus. It's like a man, listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said, I'm a just person and he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, oh God, you know we're Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God. Refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation. For your sake. Then I assure you. Whatever else it is. That is holding you. Must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. 
supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second parada Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him 
he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat. keep coming
hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away you don't have to be no man condemns you the mercy the mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast 
so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep holding on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i keep pressing on until my change comes please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them let's do it quickly please one minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's being streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs> hallelujah now please begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness i tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why i'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit.
Sitting on the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we we'll played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures 
I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Keturah. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees. And we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how I, as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. And I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, if you can be 190 and not be able to talk, but you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families 
altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now
is changing right now is changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify by the anointing of the holy spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of jesus we thank you lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit 
and, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Shekete kapa. Shekero sata. The kind of performance. I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart Lord, you know that I wanted this not for myself, but for the house. At 70, you are still standing strong. At 90, you are still moving strong. Until you get to 120, no devil takes your life. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. The force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. 
I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a man too. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment, you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on, your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background, they may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places. Strange honor in high places. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you have started, listen, something just came in my heart. Whatever you have started that ended prematurely, because this what I'm, there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is, whether it is relationship or whatever, and it ended but not by God, we put life back to it right now. I say it again. Whatever you started that ended but not by God, by a manipulation of darkness, it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God praise, my goodness. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.